This is me trying to experience what it feels like to be a fish. Actually, I'm not that good at all. But thankfully, the photo doesn't show that. No, but seriously, life of fish can be interesting to us hardworking people under continuous stress, as they have a very short-term memory, which, to be honest, is very appealing. During that hour underwater, I practiced relaxing mindfulness, and I felt calm and quiet, and I was in ultimate peace. During that moment of peace, I came up with an idea that I want to share it with you right now. That is, what if technology can take away all of our troubles and worries and set us free just like fish are? The next day, I was caught up in this situation on a checkpoint. I'm sure many of you had this experience before. People were jostling, pushing through, fighting and shouting, some cursing the occupation, some cursing each other. They wanted to go to schools, to work, struggling their way to just survive another day. And I was more convinced that being alive and being human should be about more than that. Should be about much, much more than just surviving another day. And I thought we might need some kind of transformation, maybe by technology. And I imagined a world with unlimited resources, free energy, uh, no car accidents, perfectly fair trade, and abundance of all human needs. Life is hard, and the world is complex enough today. And while this complexity can bring us diversity and sometimes incentivize innovation, but it can also bring us inconsistencies, competition on resources, and different kinds of conflicts. One of these complexities is overpopulation. It's expected to have just north of 12 billion people by the year 2100. 12 billion. Which is mind-blowing. Not only it's more people than what we will ever have in the Harab al Balad. It's also a critical number in terms of sustaining world's physical resources. So we should figure out how to tackle all of that issue of overpopulation, finite resources, while satisfying all human needs at the same time. Many motivational theories suggest that we as humans have our own fundamental set of needs, both intellectual and simply materialistic. And we have to meet them somehow, and technology has been useful in that direction so far. So for the first time, our intellectual needs. I do think, and I do believe, that it's a natural human drive to be innovative and creative. I'm not saying that everyone is going to be creative in a very visible way, but there are many examples where people were genuinely creative. Al-Khawarizmi didn't invent algebra for money or for narrow personal gain. The same applies for Leonardo da Vinci as a painter, philosopher, artist, and designer. These and many other examples throughout history show us that human creativity, innovation, idea creation, and some values like caring for others will not stop in any case in a world with very limited resources or in a world with zero cost of living. In terms of the second type, which are our materialistic needs, and referring to the traditional capitalistic model, we find that 
the cost of production for anything in any kind of systems can be expressed as the cost of three elements. Material used in manufacturing, energy consumed in the production process, and labor, or the workforce effort. And we need to make all of the above as less costly as possible. So, the first element is material. Material is finite, and recycling is the answer. There is an increasingly growing percentage of recycled material being used in manufacturing today worldwide. And there is a growing trend towards using eco-friendly 3D printing, and sometimes to go even virtual altogether in many personal use cases. So there is a worldwide consensus to emphasize that and to encourage people, societies, and governments to go eco-friendly for the benefit of the planet. The challenge of going into that direction in full is usually economical, but this is temporary. And it will be ultimately irrelevant when we see the big picture and the perfect return on investment at the end. Some examples to be inspired by is Switzerland, which is a leading country in recycling with over 52% of all of its total waste being recycled. 52%. Germany, by the way, recycles 56% of all of its total waste, which is amazing. So it's real, it's happening. And I think that the world will reach 100% recycling rate sometime in the near future which means that the cost of material will be nothing, as you will be able to use it so many times. First element, checked. The second element is the energy consumed in the production process. As we move towards electrified world, we see technological advances, accelerating technological advances in uh, mainly solar and other clean renewable energy collection equipments and integrated battery and storage solutions with considerable drop in cost. Here's an example of self-sustainable house with sunroofs, which are basically solar panels that look like normal roof tiles with an electric vehicle. And according to experts, harvesting the sun energy alone can be much, much more than enough for the whole global energy demand. Imagine that. And imagine if you merge that with other kinds of hydropower, geothermal, wind energy sources. Imagine not needing gas for your car, or not having to pay a $100 electricity bill each month. But in fact, to become electricity generator and contributor to the grid. And of course, that whole grid will be networked and smartly managed, and most importantly, dynamically allocated. So there is an inevitable, fully renewable, energy-dependent future in households, in factories, in transportation, in data centers, and so on. Which means that the cost of the second element will be also covered. Third, labor. Since the Industrial Revolution, the world became less dependent on blue collar or manual labor. As people moved from farming to factories to cashiers and so on. However, with the very recent exponential advances in robotics, in machine learning, and artificial intelligence, the case will be even much less dependence on human element in the workforce altogether. Even in the most traditionally exclusively human fields. Here are some examples of using robotics in agriculture, in medicine, in surgery, in cooking, in arts, in fashion, and even to use artificial neural networks and so many general purpose applications. And while this may bring us 
many implications and concerns. I mean, people having fewer and fewer jobs. At least from the system's point of view, that will make the cost of labor also zero. Yeah, we are doomed. No, just kidding. <laughs> In this kind of world, a merger between humans and machines might be a very good idea. And there are many recent breakthroughs in that direction. Many pioneers suggest taxation on robots, and a very appealing consideration is a universal basic income for everyone, or UBI for short, which means an income for everyone with little or no work at all. To be honest, it's simple from a technical point of view. But it's a bit complicated from social and political context point of view. And people are still discussing and debating this universal basic income concept. Maybe machines will help us figure that out one day. But I tell you, there are many different real world, current real world, experiments of that universal basic income, and the initial results are really, really promising. In total, all scenarios will lead to a zero cost of living. And by satisfying, <laughs> thank you. And by satisfying all human needs, along with continuous self-improving social and governance system, a new paradigm shift in thinking will take place, including questioning and rethinking so many concepts in our lives. Maybe when everything costs nothing, we will, we will be able to go back to ourselves and focus on what truly really matters. Maybe then, or maybe that will let us swim freely, as fish do. Maybe we are fish after all. Swimming in our own thoughts, and confined only by our own traditional artificial constraints, and imagination. Perhaps at that moment, we can capture the true essence of what it means to be human. <laughs> and be able to move to the next step, which I like to refer to by humanity 2.0. <laughs> the more I look around, and see we will fighting over physical resources and how this may bring about misery, instability, and difference. I realize that being alive and being human should not be that way. So the message I'm trying to send across here, let's learn about all of these future scenarios. Let the technology deal with all of that not so human things. And let us go back to ourselves and focus on what really matters. And deeply ex explore ourselves more. Let's figure out our true potential. And I urge every one of you to do just that. Let's explore who we truly are. And that, I think, is an idea worth spreading. Thank you.